welcome to my YouTube channel and blog. I'm Jenny Hall. Thanks for joining me for another tutorial. Today I'm making a 3D project. Instead of a card, I'm going to make a gift holder that I can gift to a teacher. There are two kids in our house and we give lots of teachers gifts for every occasion. It's always nice to have something else to be able to give them as a change. I'm working with Home Sweet Home Thin Lits dies and Sweet Home Stamp Set, both from Stampin' Up. They were previously in the holiday catalog and they were in a bundle. However, you can still purchase them as they've been carried over, but they're no longer able to be purchased as a bundle. The products that I'm going to use on my little house today are limited. There are a lot of things in this little, um, well it's not a little, it's a really big die set. There are many possibilities for many different occasions. I want to make this a very simple house to demonstrate exactly how you can use a Christmas product or a Halloween product for many different occasions. I'm going into my crafty supplies to be able to stretch them out for more holidays. There are several different pieces that um, I'm kind of questioned about on how, what do I use on how to make the door and how do I use this and how do I put this on and to be honest with you guys, you just kind of fly by the seat of your pants when you're using this set or at least I do. How I approached it was I knew that I had to have two side panels in order to create one house unit. I knew that I wanted to have one door and two windows. So I, so I looked into the die set and I found what I needed and then I kind of played around with it to see what was going to give me the look that I needed to get. Because I am not going to be adding a whole lot of things to the outside of this 3D project, I want to be able to give it some interest and texture by using this paneling stamp. I'm calling it paneling because I'm not really sure what it would be called. Maybe siding or something for the wood boards. Where I grew up, it was called paneling. I'm just giving it a stamp down, keeping in mind that the orientation between the two different sides of this unit is different because it will be folded and each one of those folds is on a different angle if I were to stamp it straight across then it would definitely not come out it would be very wonky and it wouldn't come out with the right kind of perspective in my making my plans I wanted to definitely have a different colored door and I wanted the paper for the door to match the paper for the roof of the house. How I approached this was to cut out and stamp a door from Tip Top Taupe and then I'm going to just apply it to the actual house. There's a couple of different ways I'm sure and there are a lot of people with much more experience with this set of dies than me. But the way that I came about this was I wanted to have some border around the door and I thought the little heart would look really cute as a doorknob and I just kind of tried a couple of different things and I wanted to see what worked. This was the simple way for me to be able to get from A to Z. Using a bone folder is key to this project. As with many 3D projects, you are required to burnish the fold lines. It's going to take a lot of folding and it's this is not a five minute card process. It, it's a little bit more involved. So whenever someone will receive this type of gift, my thought is that they really can tell that you put some time and thought into the gift that you're giving them. It's It's really important to look at the time that you're putting into something and see is this the right project for the occasion and I uh, can personally tell you that my ambitions be it they get 
way far larger than the time that I have allotted to make projects. I will overcommit myself by giving um, a, an RSVP for 3D projects and, and make a ton of them and I am ended up staying up half of the night to get it done. So just budget yourself if you are going to be working with this type of a project that's the lesson that I have learned in working with it and I wanted to share that with you guys. I used the die to cut the window panes and then there is the window, um, the, I guess you want to call it the window frame that you can just place over it. Something that I did on a different 3D project with this die set is to put vellum on the inside. That way it looks like you actually have some windows. However, on this project, I did not want to have the windows covered up. I want it to be very obvious that there's candy inside and that there is um, a clear view to the inside of the project. I'm placing this very small die cut heart over where the doorknob would be. It's a little bit large and um, I guess you could say that it's out of perspective for the project, but there's a minimum of um, different kind of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Accessories, we'll say accessories. Um, there's not a lot of accessories on this project. There's really not much of um, decorations hanging off of it. So I felt that, especially on the front door, that it would kind of bring a little bit more interest and that it might look a little more plain as a project overall if I didn't give it a few little individual um, decorations such as this. Now that, that door is made to where it will open and close. However, I don't want the door to function and open and close. I want it to just stay flat. I will eventually cut a hole in the back of the unit to be able to put the candy. There's a couple of different ways to approach being able to put the candy um, into the house and be and be reopened by the gift receiver and I'll go through those as we as we get to that section. This is the tear and tape from Stampin' Up and if you've worked with it before, then you can definitely tell people how strong this stuff is. And the reason that I'm using it is because I don't want this project to come unglued. I could use liquid glue and it would work really nicely, but I don't feel like liquid glue is going to lend itself well enough to being able to stay in place. And I would have to hold it in place until it dried. So liquid glue is definitely out of the question for this type of project for me. Tear and tape is great and it's fast. The only problem I ever have with tear and tape is that once it gets onto the project, then getting the release paper to come off of it can be a little bit tricky. There is, a, there is definitely a way that I have found to make it a little bit easier and that would be pushing the paper, the the back of the paper into the cardstock as I'm doing here with the bone folder. What it is that in my mind that I'm seeing happen is the glue is becoming a little bit more part of the paper and so whenever I pull the release paper away it will come away with much more ease and I won't have to wrestle with it. Um, wrestling with tape and glue and ribbons is already a side side job for me it seems like. The way that I approach actually putting these two pieces together is at the bottom. That's a good place to start for me. And then from there I just kind of take the paper off of the I just build up from there. I take the paper off of one side at a time and work with putting it together and work my way around. It is always a great idea to have a bone folder handy or some type of uh, like maybe a the cap to a pen 
or the eraser to a pencil, something that will allow you to put some pressure on where the folds are meeting and allow for those pieces to become a little bit more one with each other before you move on to the next part. Here is a place where you can actually choose to close the roof in or you can take those top flaps and fold them the opposite direction than I did, which would be folding them out instead of folding them under. And that will allow you to put candy in and out of the top. How you would approach closing it is entirely a, another project. You could take a mini clothespin and you could close them together at the top, or you could take a piece of ribbon and tie a piece of ribbon in a poked hole or a slot. I do like the idea of definitely, you know, having at least one side of the roof that you can open and release, and that way the person can get the candy out without destroying the house. One thing um, to let you guys know that it is very easy to close this house up and not leave yourself any holes whatsoever <laughs> for putting the candy inside the house. I was so focused on getting all of the pieces put together that I didn't really focus enough on putting another piece to open. So the one thing that you can do is to take that door framelit and to put it, if you don't want the front door to be the place that the candy comes in and out, then you can just put it on the back side of the house and have it to where it's not going to be from a, you know, it's going to be from the cardstock of the actual building. It's just going to be a place to open and open and shut it. So um, I would suggest plan out where you want the opening to be before you put the roof together and before you glue the door on. There are easy ways to make the roof for this project. If you wanted the roof to be open from the top, then one way would be to just do a roof, um, a two-sided roof. You know, like one panel of roof would be on each side of the house and then you could have the um, opening for the roof actually still come up and out and put it with a clothespin. You could decorate the clothespin with some ribbons and twine, sequins, um, just really make it make it look like it's part of the design of the project. To decorate the roof and make this more of a sweet little cottage, I'm using those frosting marks or frosting lines and I want it to stagger them to where it would look a little bit more original. They also kind of look like the scales of a fish, and I thought that was cool. My son thought it was really cool, too. There are a lot of different ways you could go about putting some kind of decoration on the roof. You could do some stamping. The, um, the stamp that Hat that I put on the side build the side of the buildings that would work great for the roof and there's little candy pieces that are in the stamp set and the die set you could put um, little circles there's also another die that's not this little scallop looking die but it, it looks like roof shingles and you could put that I used that die on a little house out of that I made out off of these projects um, products that was a Halloween theme and it was really cute and it reminded me of those um, th you know those Halloween teeth that um, that the kids put in and they look all um, they, they look funny and goofy for Halloween I'm going to attach the roof to the project and this project is almost over. I appreciate you guys sticking with me through the whole thing. I know this is a long video. Um, I'm just using a little bit of the fine tip glue pen. I could have used some more tear and tape but at this point I just wanted the roof to stick on. And I do not want there to be any overhang on the, on the cottage. It, it kind of looks a little more like a cottage to me. 
Um, so to keep it sl clean and simple, then I just cut the roof down to be flush with all of the sides of the product. Thank you guys for joining me for another tutorial. I don't have too many 3D projects, but I appreciate it whenever you guys give me great feedback about them. I want you to stay tuned to the very end of this video because my son has a special little, little card that he was working on and he wanted me to share it with you all. Here is a very small opening that I'm making on the back in order to put the candy in. So if I had planned ahead and used the door framelit, then I would be able to just open the little door framelit and put that inside. And here is what it looks like to just put a couple of little candy pieces inside. They can come out easily and the door just needs to be large enough for a couple of fingers to fit inside. Very easy, very, very simple and a nice project to share with somebody. Thanks again and be sure to stay tuned to the end of the video. Are you making a card? What are you doing, Trip? Are you making a card? I am. Can you open this? Yes, that's your glue stick. Trip, can you look up and say hi? Can you say thanks for watching the video? Thanks for watching the video. See you next time.